Hey there, I'm Eric Kennett, and on this video, I'm going to be fixing a Mars Hydro grow light. This is their older style of grow light. I've been keeping this beast running for years and years on end. Troller went out on one of these things. They told me that it couldn't be fixed and that they no longer sold it, so I opened up the controller, replaced the caps. Anyways, long story short, I keep these beasts running for a long time. So I'm going to show you guys how basically I test this board and find the bad LED and replace it on it. To be doing this, I'll be using this super LED tester. You can find it down in the description below if it's available at the moment. This thing's great. Uh, one word of caution though is don't actually touch the two ends of this thing because it will give you one little bit of a jolt. Uh, ask me how I know that. <laughs> First thing I'm going to want to do is turn it on and see exactly what area I have the problem in blind myself a little bit here so it is definitely this last panel over here unfortunately it's the one i haven't taken the grills off yet um i've been just leaving them off to save myself time each time i do the repair it also seems to maybe help them keep cool a little bit can't prove that though. I haven't ran an official test or anything on that so pretty much i'm going to start removing these sections and looking for the bad led on it I usually you have to go to the other side there's a bolt on it but my care for these little covers has gone really short over the years so i actually super glued them on the back side so they would be able to come out like that every once in a while like this one here the super glue slipped so i'm just going to end up by pulling back on it and ripping the head off of it yep there's another one that slipped off there i was able to get that one to just pull them back on it and using the screwdriver i was able to get it because yeah there's a little plastic nut on the other side I hate these reflectors. I'll show you how they trick here real quick. Okay, and if you really don't care about these fins, this is one method I like to use. This is my uh, cheap soldering iron. I use it to burn things all cut plastic with it. But anyways, you just take it and uh, kind of just use it as a screwdriver for it. And pretty much just melt the head right off of the things. And then yep, you just pop right up off of it. That's just one quick trick to do it. Of course, <clears throat> you get a little toxic fumes there. <clears throat> okay, now that we got our first section exposed, I'm ready to use the tester and test through this here to see if any of these are bad. Because I'm lazy, I want to find what's wrong before I have to take them all off. Even though one day they will all end up off anyways. And with the tester, pretty much I just got to find the polarity on the board. So I can see the positive is on. It's got a plus on that one, a negative on that side. So, appears already I may have found my dud here. So that's the way they're supposed to light up. That's a good LED. So I got it on positive, negative. And yeah, this LED is not lighting up. So that would be a bad one. I'm going to go ahead and test all the rest of them in this group here. Polarity switched here. Uh, they kind of go back and forth. So even that old melted thing is still a valid LED. It actually lights up. So I'm going to leave it. Another good one. Switch the poles again. These ones just go back and forth each time. They light up. Next one. Good. Yeah, guys, I use these to uh, grow all kinds of tomatoes and other plants. I don't want to get the algorithm going by mentioning what with other plants, but I live in Arizona, so. So that definitely, this top, the very first LED I went to check here, there's definitely something malfunctioning in it. I'm not getting it to, uh-uh, I'm not getting any light up there. So that is definitely a dud there. So hopefully that's the only dud in this group. So get the soldering iron out real quick. First, I'm just going to rub a little bit of uh, flux right on those two solder joints just to make it just a little bit easier to get it off. One other trick to find the bad LED, and you better make sure you're actually on direct current to be able to do this, is you need a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, then you go ahead and tie. We already know that's the bad LED there, so I'm going to show you what happens when you find the bad LED with needle nose pliers. It's going to be a lot of blinding, of course. But bring it in here. Oh, wow, that's not the bad LED. That one lights up. Son of a bitch. What the hell? So we can clearly see that LED I was about to work on is not the bad one. Hmm. I wonder why it wasn't lighting up with the meter. That's actually kind of strange. 
So yeah, we definitely know if I turn it on now, I was about to remove that one. That definitely is not the fault because, well, you can clearly see there that the LED is lighting up. So I'm going to proceed to go through and try to find the fault of why the board's not lighting up on that part, which means I got to remove the next panel. Okay, I'm going to go through and test the next group. Good there. Good there. There, there. I'm going to come back to where it's switching. It takes it kind of time consuming. Okay, I'm getting up. Nope, that one's good still. That's good. All right, now I got to switch the polarity and do all the opposite ones every other one. So we got a good one. We're good. Good. Good, good, and good. So next panel it is. Nominal, nominal, good, good. All right, that one's showing problems right here. So first thing I'm gonna do is turn on and make sure this one doesn't light up and that is confirmed. All right, and to make sure that this is our problem and make sure you've got L LEDs that are on the DC, not AC, or uh, you may lighten yourself up where you would need a rubber glove doing this. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna short out between the positive and negative and if that's the fault LED, the rest of the board will light up. So here we go. Oddly enough, it does seem to be a trickle of energy down through through the ones that are not working. Is yeah, I'm getting a slight light up on all of them. So this one may actually could be a controller issue. That LED definitely also looks like a problem there. Um, and here you can see one of the very same types in that LED. Yeah, see, and I, the meter is able to light it light it up. So there is something wrong with this particular LED. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this one, see what it corrects, and then we'll go from there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of flux to this one, just to make my life easier here. With the improper tool, this is one of the screws. Okay, now the soldering iron's heated up. I'm going to go ahead and extract this chip from here. And there she is. That's definitely one of the faulty ones. And I'll be replacing it with one of these full spectrum LEDs here. A little uh, five watts, the same as the ones on the board. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is put a little thermal paste there. This just helps conduct the heat from the chip into the board so it can be cooled back off. You'll notice there's a little slot in the middle to signify where the negative side of this one is. So if you wanna match it up on the board, put it backwards, it definitely will not work. So negative, negative. Just gonna throw her on there. And I'm gonna solder it down real quick. Funny on these boards, you can see some of the history of me uh, learning how to solder. <laughs> some of them uh, in the beginning look really, really bad, but it's kind of impressive. Some of those LEDs are still working. All right, I feel like that's a pretty good connection there. So I'm gonna go ahead and power up the board and see what happens pretty much. And yeah, that did not rectify the problem, huh? So this one may be actually, maybe a driver issue. Um, oh man, everything looks like it's lighting up on the other side. So the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is, I'm gonna pop open the back and start messing with the drivers now. Okay, to get to the drivers now, basically I gotta remove like, I don't know, like a, 12 screws on this whole thing. So I'm gonna remove all those real quick. 
Oh yeah, you guys like watching me screw it, huh? Sick bastard. Okay, now we got the screws removed. Now I'm ready to take off the back. I need to plug in for this test, but I also, when doing this, I need to be very careful not to touch any of the AC current because it will fry me. And my cat's trying to negotiate, you know. Great. All right. <laughs> Mr. Kitty, no, nobody wants to hear about your business. Shh, shh, Mr. Kitty. I'm gonna check the fans real quick to make sure all they're going while I'm here. Turn all that on. And I definitely have the fan out. This fan over here isn't moving whatsoever, so I definitely have a control a problem going on. Okay, just, just as I suspected, the controller that's hooked up to this fan is also the one that goes to this board. So I have a suspicion that there is capacitors bad inside that. So I'm going to pull this controller, controller D here real quick. For experiment's sakes, I'm going to disconnect this one side and hook it up to one of the other controllers over here. One of the ones that I do know that work just to see uh, if the, all the LEDs light up. Just to eliminate uh, possibilities of what, what's going on. Okay, so... I got the controller swapped real quick. I'm going to turn it on and see if this bottom section lights up. And of course, there'll be one out here because that's where I borrowed the uh, controller from. So, you do. And as you can see, it totally lights up. So, this is 100% a controller problem. Could have been both, actually. That one LED was showing uh, having to have issues. So, a lot of times when things do go, they go out and change. So now I'm going to know to pull off that controller D real quick and we're going to take a look inside of it. Okay, now uh, pulling, pulling controller D out of here shouldn't be too hard. Just, and I can tell I've never done it because I wouldn't have had the zip ties back onto here because, well, I'm not bouncing a semi with this thing. So, remove that one. See, this is the incoming power there. That off. Power side one goes to the fan here. Put a bunch of it on that, and now this back clip, nothing special there. Just take that off. All right, now I just got a couple uh mounting bracket or clamp bolts here. All right, the back case of this inverter is basically just uh, basically a pop on there. Pretty easy to take off. All right, so we now we're into it. Bet you anything, it's a capacitor. I sure hope so because it's pretty much the only thing I know how to fix on these. So. Let's go ahead and pop it open and we'll take a look at our caps here, see if we see anything. And flipping it over, right away I can tell it's these two little caps. The way you tell if a capacitor is blown, you by looking at the top of it, you see where that plus is? If it's not perfectly flat, it's a little bit swollen. That's a relief valve essentially on the capacitor, so when the fluids go bad it needs to expand. And that's basically where it goes so it doesn't explode. I'm looking at all the other capacitors. They they all look fine. So yeah, it's these two caps. And luckily I have some of these capacitors on hand. So the first thing I need to do is I need to remove these capacitors because well they're fried, so I need to take them off the board. So I need to find their adjacent pens here, which is always kind of fun. All right, looks like I'm looking at those two pins right there. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this guy from the board. And then I'm going to go ahead and go after its uh, little brother there. Ah, finally got her to pull out. I am no expert in soldering by any way. That took me forever to do that. But we're all good there. All right, now just need to extract this second one here, which those are its pins right there. All right, and got the second one out. That took freaking forever. All right, so now I just got to put new ones in. Looks like I got a big bag of these things. <laughs> uh, pretty much if you you're placing a capacitor and you don't know what it. Uh, to get just go onto Amazon and start typing in all this type stuff here 35 volt 220 uh, Faraday 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 
220 for today. And ta da, you'll find your match. Definitely get one with uh, as many hours as possible on them. That's usually how long the cap has before it blows up. Fortunately, I can only get these cheap ones at the time. I know there were some better ones online. But so far, I've never had to replace one of these. I mean, that's definitely saying something. Okay, clear the side with uh, pointing down with a negative on it is the negative there. So, just use your finger. It's like a booger. All right, and we're going to try to get this to go into that damn hole. That's so pretty much how I did that is I got it right on the tip there. Just put the tip in. I just slightly started heating the wire with the flux. Let's see if it can come on. Come on, go in. Aha! There she is. Alright, oh, now I got the negative all the way down. Now I need to start feeding it in simultaneously. I've seen some of those little mini heat guns some people use. Those look pretty cool. Of course, I have no idea how to use them, but looks pretty cool. Let's see if I can actually uh, feed both these guys at once. Ha oh, ha! I can. I did. Nice. So I actually got that one installed all the way in. I just uh, pretty much need to clip off those ends. Clip this shit off, badink, badink. All right, now I just need to add a little bit more solder on there. Cleaned it out pretty cool. Or, <laughs> cleaned it out pretty good coming through the hole. All right, got a bit of flux on it now. Hopefully now the solder will go where I want it to. All right, and now the first cap's installed. That Nice. That's the best I've ever done. The other one, last ones I did were sticking way out because I kind of got to go in the holes all the way. <laughs> kind of gave up and just bent them back. I mean, it's still going to function the same, but yeah, it definitely looks like a bad repair. So we're going to go ahead and start the second one. Yeah, I guess pretty much like that one. Yeah, I'm having to go up in there. So we're just going to, I'm just going to twist her like that and it's gonna live up in the air like the Jetsons there. It's not gonna hurt anything. It'll it'll be fine. I got a good good solid connection on both. All right, as long as I get the polarity right, right, negative, positive, no crossover on the bottom. All right, that is good. That is a good repair there. Uh, doesn't look as good as that first one. Yeah, I really have trouble getting things to go through the little holes on the board. This one, the one leg bent, and then F it. It's good enough. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna put it all back together and then get in there and test the light back out. Let's see if I remember right, far one went to the fan. So if the connection here it is connected, be able to get it to open up better. All right, so everything's connected back up. I don't wanna quite screw it back in yet because I wanna test it out, make sure, well, I'll fix the problem. All right, look at that. We got full light up across the board and all three fans are working. So that is good. Just gotta put the screws back in it now. So nice, she's all the way working again. All her LEDs are lighting up, all her fans are going. She's ready to grow tomatoes again. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful and try to have a good day.